I'm a lot higher on recent NBA 2K games than most people. That being said, in my opinion, no 2K game has been great since NBA 2K16. From 2010 through 2015, Visual Concepts released banger after banger, ending their impressive run with 2K16. This game had the best My Career story, the most fun and varied park, My League solidified itself as the greatest franchise mode in all of sports video games, My GM put icing on the cake, and My Team was at its peak. Gameplay, presentation, and graphics were all incredible for the time, and due to how recent this game was, it still holds up very well today. In fact, many 2K players prefer the gameplay and even graphics of 2K16 to any 2K since. At the time of its release, there were the usual complaints about patches or shots not going in as often as people would have liked, and other small issues, but as time went on, people began to look back at this game with a greater understanding of it. NBA 2K15 was a great game, yet 2K16 improved upon every single facet of the game. I called NBA 2K11 the greatest 2K game ever made, but if I had to pick a close second, it would be 2K16, and I'm sure many people would even rank it above 11. 2K hasn't released a game anywhere close to the level of 2K16 since, and that's probably why there seems to be such massive outrage over modern 2K games, which are still much better than games like Madden or FIFA. When you get used to year after year of excellence, and then get the awful botched launch of 2K17, and then 2K18, the year 2K went crazy with microtransactions and ruined layups and shooting, people are going to be pissed. 2K16 was the pinnacle of modern sports games, and the standard we should be comparing sports games to every year until it's topped. Whether you are an offline franchise player, an online competitive player, or just a casual basketball fan who wants to play 2K in the park with their friends, 2K16 had you covered. It was the NBA game for everyone. It was like putting spaghetti in a copy machine. It was the last great NBA 2K. This video is sponsored by Raycon. The everyday E25 earbuds really do live up to the hype. They sound just as great as other top earbuds on the market, but are only half the price. They fit great in my ears and they don't fall out unlike a lot of earbuds I've tried. Raycons are great for working from home, working out, and of course listening to music or podcasts, all without bothering roommates or neighbors. These are my go-to earbuds, and I'm not alone. The company was founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B, J.R. Smith, and more wear Raycons too. The Everyday E25 earbuds are Raycon's best model yet, with 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. Did I mention that they come in new, fun colors? By clicking the link in the description below, you can get 15% off your order. Just click that link or head over to buyraycon.com slash softdrinktv and grab yourself some Raycons for 15% off before they sell out. Now back to the video. The best place to start this retrospective off is with my career. Written by Spike Lee, this has to be the greatest career mode I've ever seen in any sports game ever. The storyline was fantastic, and it actually made you feel something. It was like a legitimate NBA movie starring you. Since 2K16, the storylines and writing have been pretty cheesy, but 16's was not like that at all. Not only was the story great, but the actual gameplay and features this mode offered were insane. You start in high school, choosing between three high schools, and you play a full home away in championship game. Then you get approached by colleges. Real colleges, that's right. For the first time since College Hoops 2K8, 2K let you play on a real college team against other real college teams in real college stadiums. The game did a great job recreating the college basketball atmosphere. 2K was able to negotiate directly with schools to use their branding in the game, bypassing the NCAA. The teams also featured some real players, as the games took place the season before, meaning NBA rookies were playing on their college teams. You'd see Frank Kaminsky on Wisconsin, for example. 
Before committing to college, a few schools try to sway you with Michigan offering you a chance to break Glenn Rice's records, or UCLA explaining their banner of excellence. As you play your college games, the commentary team talks and discusses your backstory and road to college, adding immersion and depth to the story as you play. The attention to detail and care, all in simply this one part of this one mode in this entire game, was amazing. Once you get drafted, the story doesn't end. Between games of your rookie year, the story continues with more cutscenes and it all adds up to the most immersive experience in any sports game ever. My career goes from being an interactive movie to an open world online adventure. Continue playing your NBA career, gaining accolades, upgrading your players, signing sponsorship deals, giving yourself tattoos, etc. Or head over to the greatest park of all time. Just look at how beautiful and varied this park was compared to the generic, ugly park we've seen go without changes over multiple games in recent 2K games. 2K16 also introduced My Court, allowing you to create and customize your own court in your house and invite friends over to play 1v1, horse, or just shoot around. There was also the Pro-Am mode, allowing you to team up with friends, create a team, and go head-to-head -head against other teams online. All of this, in simply one mode, is something many 2K fans take for granted today, but it was well appreciated in 2K16 due to how well-rounded it all was. Think for a second, what other sports game features this much depth simply in its career mode? The other game modes 2K16 had to offer were nothing short of excellent. Of course, there was Play Now, featuring the ability to play with more classic teams, a feature that had been introduced in 2K11, all-time teams, or obviously the default rosters for that season. Play Now Online was introduced and offered a ranking approach to the mode, and it seems like 2K16 was the last time 2K touched Play Now Online, which is a bummer. Blacktop was at its peak, offering a better court, and players actually wore their team's jersey, which looked a lot better than the generic ringers and ballers black and white t-shirts you see now. My league was pretty much the same as it is today, which is incredible. No other sports game comes close. My League is the game's franchise mode, and boy oh boy is it deep. Play through the Summer League, vote to change NBA League rules in the offseason, relocate or rebrand your team at any time, creating your own team name, logo, colors, uniform, and even arena. You can upload an Arby's logo online and place it on your court. You can literally do anything. Stat tracking was so in-depth, showing complete league history, player history, and every possible stat you could track in basketball. It was like Football Manager, only inside a fully featured flagship NBA video game. Since even before 2K16, 2K had been head and shoulders above the rest of sports video games in the franchise mode front. 2K16 put them even further ahead, to the point where franchise modes in MLB The Show, Madden, FIFA, NHL, or any other sports game all feel weak and shallow. 2K didn't stop there. My GM mode was my league with all the new improvements, but with a storyline guiding you, similar to my career. My team was actually great in 2K16, and despite my disliking of the microtransaction riddled card collecting game modes in sports games, my team was actually fun and varied. 2K16 introduced a 3 on 3 online mode for the first time, which was the precursor to Triple Threat. So obviously 2K16 was an incredibly deep game, with so many possible things to do that you would never get bored. Create your own team from scratch and run it for 80 seasons in my league or play through an NBA career and enjoy the fantastic storyline of my career, or head over to the park and play streetball online, or invite friends to your my court, or play blacktop with your roommate, or experience the fun and stress of being an NBA general manager in my GM, or build your dream team lineup in my team while competing online. While later 2K games have all had these same modes, they have either stagnated or gotten worse since. 2K16 was the absolute peak of the quality of these game modes. But the depth of 2K16 isn't what made it such a great game exclusively. Sure, it's a huge part of it, but the gameplay of 2K16 is where the game really shined. 2K15 was no scrub, but 2K16 kept innovating, completely upgrading gameplay in every possible way. 
In previous games, it was pretty easy to cheese around defenders to the rim, but AI was vastly improved in 16. If you tried to run the same play over and over, or set the same screens over and over in the same part of the court, the AI would adjust and shut it down. The physics and foot planting was completely changed, making it impossible to slip and slide around the court. Players moved in a lifelike fashion that respected momentum, and from a distance looked like a legit NBA broadcast. Real basketball concepts worked. Imagine that, a sports game, where applying real knowledge of the sport leads to success. Post up moved to left trigger, and you now had even more control over passes. Most hardcore 2K players would agree that 2K16 was the peak of 2K's gameplay. Everything looked and played fair, or at least as close to fair as any sports game had been to that point. Presentation was top notch. Kenny the Jet Smith was added to the pregame show, giving it a TNT feel. Commentary, especially throughout my career, is fantastic, and the game's incredible visuals along with the impressive on-screen graphics for stats made 2K16 look like a real NBA game on TV. Players all looked nearly identical to their real-life counterparts and had their own signature animation, shots, and celebrations. Of course, I was not going to forget the soundtrack. 2K has always done a great job selecting varied tracks, and 2K16 had one of the greatest soundtracks in a sports video game, period. It even had some throwback songs from older 2K games, including Clean Living by RJD2, a song from my favorite sports game of all time, ESPN NFL 2K5. NBA 2K16 was the culmination of years and years of building upon a solid foundation. While I still think the massive leaps and bounds 2K11 made to push the genre forward made that game worthy of being called the greatest NBA 2K game of all time, 2K16 is so close. Every single part of the game was great. Since then, NBA 2K games have gotten worse, as many of the additions to 2K16 have either been downgraded or left completely untouched over the past four years. 2K17 and 18 were a mess at launch, and while 2K19 was an improvement, 2K20 had another awful launch and some terrible issues such as the dreaded transition defense. NBA 2K16 truly was the last great 2K, and although the servers are now offline, the core game is still good enough to go back and revisit without it feeling outdated. Give it a try if you haven't, as the game is really cheap used. And thanks for watching.